Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video in my series, My Live Gig Setup. Today we are going to talk about the Line 6 Helix and how it became the center hub for everything I need and do in my live gigs. But before that, a little trip down memory lane. I have always enjoyed using the latest and greatest technology that my money can afford. I've never enjoyed using simple gear, just a simple analog mixer into a couple of speakers. Sometimes less is more, but sometimes more is more. Back in a day where digital equipment wasn't available, yes, I had an analog mixer, but I had a bunch of rack mount gear, compressors, EQs, effects processors, to help me achieve what I always wanted to hear. Later on, where digital mixers became accessible and affordable, I bought the first O1V, Yamaha O1V, and then later on the O1V 96. And that was the mixer that came with me to gigs with a band. Later on, with a smaller band, where I didn't want to carry a big chunky piece of gear like that, I used to take a MacBook Pro with an RME sound card and process everything on stage through logic. And then later on in the recent few years, when digital mixers became really, really small and affordable, now only iPad controllable as well, I have yet again changed my setup. And for the last few years, I have been gigging with an iPad controlled mixer only. My one-man band setup used to take about an hour to set up completely at a gig. And I came with sound, lights, a smoke machine, DMX controllable lights. It was very elaborate and took quite a while to set up and strike after the gigs. And although I've enjoyed it tremendously, all the added time and effort took its toll on me. And I kept on looking for new ways to improve my setup, dramatically lower the time it takes me to set up the gear, but not compromise on the sound quality. And that was quite a challenge. I tried different things, different smaller mixes, other pedals, and everything led me to the same conclusion. I need to experiment with my Helix and see what I can do with it. Because the Helix offers so many inputs and outputs and essentially four paths of audio, like four channels in a mixer. And so I sat at home, set up everything that I need to take to a gig, but only set up the Helix as the center device that everything plugs into. My microphone, my backtracks, and of course my guitar. I had to think of new ways to utilize the paths because the top two use one processor and the bottom two use another processor. And I had to find ways to divide the workload on the processors so I can have an elaborate preset that can contain everything I need to run everything into the Helix. After some experimentation, I did find a winning solution. And the initial setup I've done at home, but it did take me a couple of gigs to fine tune everything to work and sound like I heard it in my head. As opposed to a mixer where you can control everything right next to you, the Helix sits on the floor. So I had to bend down between songs, sometimes even in the middle of a song, to just dial in what needed to be fixed. So yes, after my first gig, things already sounded a lot better. But two, three gigs down the line, I managed to dial in exactly what I wanted to hear. And since then, I haven't touched the preset at all, except when I plug in a different microphone or a different guitar. So I began gigging like that all of my gigs. The average time it could take me down to between 12 or 20 minutes, depending how far I have to walk with the equipment from the car to the venue and onto the stage area. This was a tremendous achievement for me. At a time when I was starting to gig with the Helix as the main hub, I was using this microphone as my vocal mic, the Neumann KMS 104 Plus. It is a condenser microphone. It needs phantom power from the Helix. And while it sounded great and it worked great, and what I didn't know about the Helix is while Phantom is on, you do not want to plug or unplug a microphone while the Helix is actually switched on. Doing so will result in you frying the preamp chip on the main board of the Helix. Now it can be a very cheap and easy fix if you know someone who can replace the chip for you. And I do know someone here in South Africa. Unfortunately, he was not available at the time. And the next day I had a gig. It was quite unfortunate and quite expensive. I had to replace the whole main board of the Helix, which made me think, now that I'm using the Helix as the only device in my whole setup, what happens 
if a terrible accident happens? What if a power surge occurs? What if somebody spills something on it and it completely stops working? Etc. Etc. So I started thinking, I need a second device. And I started looking around what else is available before I buy another Helix. At the time when I started looking around, the Helix was already six plus years old. I was worried that I buy a Helix and a new Helix comes out within a couple of months. From all other units available on the market, the only other device with a similar I.O. and processing power and the four paths needed was the Quad Cortex. I have to be honest, I tried it, it was amazing. It was really, really great as far as you plug in your guitar, you're dialing a tone very, very, very quickly. You can come up with a really great sound. However, the Quad Cortex at the time was just about brand new pretty much in its diapers. And to some extent, even a year later, it's still in its diapers. I eventually opted to buy a second Helix for a few reasons. Number one, as I stated, the Quad Cortex is still in its diapers. And over a year later, it's still not able to compete with the Helix as far as what I personally need from it. The different foot switch assignments. I have a whole bunch of different foot switches programmed into my presets. It doesn't allow that on a Quad Cortex. Furthermore, I wanted something that simple that when I program my one helix, I back it up and I dump that information into the second helix. No changes. If I need to use my spare helix for whatever reason, everything works identically on the second one. Programming a second unit like the quad cortex would take again some time and quite a bit of effort that I don't have available to me all the time. And so, like I said, the choice was to get a second Helix. So now at my gigs, I can rest assured that if something goes wrong with my one Helix, the second Helix is always at arm's reach. And in fact, if it was affordable enough, I would buy a third Helix, just in case. All right, let's run through my preset and I'll explain to you every block and the foot switch assignments for those blocks. As I only need three sound sources of the Helix and I prefer to have a more elaborate guitar path I have divided the guitar path, one on top and one on the bottom. And the center two paths are dedicated for the vocals and for the backtracks. So the top row and the bottom row are for the guitar. I always start my presets with some sort of pitch shifter. Where processing power can allow me to do so, I will use the capo. In this case, I had to use the normal pitch shifter. That's the first block on the top left. And while it is assigned to an on-off switch, I am also using stacked snapshots to change the actual tuning. Minus three, minus two, minus one, plus one, plus two, plus three. Of course, the second block is a wah, and that is activated and controlled by the onboard expression pedal. A compressor block that is always on and is a part of my tone. I adjust it in a certain way so I can drive the amp a little more but still not get a broken up sound just before it's broken up. The next block is a gain block that allows me to push the amp further or to push the distortion before the amp further and that's given me quite a few different gain options. The impulse response block as I've mentioned in previous videos, it's something that I had found right in the beginning as I was starting to use the Helix. It sounded great to me. It's been with me since I started using the Helix. An EQ block adjusts a little bit further the sound of the guitar. Now we're looking at the bottom path, a compressor block after the amp. This, along with the EQ block on the first row, is used a little bit more like a traditional mixer where you would adjust the tone for the PA. A reverb block. Two chorus blocks alternating. The one that's usually on is very subtle and you can barely hear it. The second one is much more prominent. It's also in stereo. And when I switch it on, the other chorus switches off. It gives me that more luscious 80s kind of chorus. Two delay blocks, one normal quarter notes, quite soft in the mix just to give dimension to the guitar sound when I'm soloing or otherwise if it's needed. And the second one, it's more that U2, Pink Floyd, big sounding 
rhythmical delay. A solo volume boost, and then another EQ just because I needed it. The second row is just for the back tracks. I plug into a stereo effects return on the Helix, and that second path has two different EQs for tone shaping and a compressor to further shape the sound and even out minor differences in the volume between the tracks. The vocal chain is a little bit more elaborate. I've got a gain block to adjust the gain of the microphone. That depends if I'm using my SM58 or my Beta 58 or any other mic that I might need. It always helps having gain control over the input of the mic. Immediately a compressor and three types of EQs. Some of them are simple, some of them are more elaborate. A reverb that's always on and quarter note delay for the vocals that I activate with this switch. And then what I also needed for this preset is some sort of mute for the guitar and the vocals while I'm playing background music before my sets and in between my sets. So I added this button to mute just the parts of the guitar and the vocals. The downside to this preset is that I cannot tune my guitar while I'm playing any background music. So I tune my guitar before I start playing anything on the iPad. And then I have a clip on tuner for when I need to tune again without interrupting the background music. If you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to write to me below. Please subscribe, hit that bell button. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.